let's take a look at employee selection. Hiring decisions are about finding the people who will be a good fit with the job and the organization. The organization's decisions about selecting personnel are central to its abilities to survive, adapt, and grow. Selection decisions become especially critical when organizations face tight labor markets or must compete for talent with other organizations in the same industry. There are many ways for organizations to minimize errors in employee selection and placement. Through personnel selection, organizations make decisions about who will or will not be invited to join the organization. Selection begins with the candidates identified through recruitment and with attempts to reduce the number of the individuals best qualified to perform the available jobs. Steps include reviewing applications, administering selection tests, conducting job interviews, checking references, and conducting background checks. Supervisors and team members often are involved in the interview stage of the process and select a person to receive a job offer. In some cases, the candidate may negotiate with the organization regarding salary and benefits. If the candidate accepts the job, the organization places him or her in that job. The ease of applying online has made this processing overwhelming for many recruiters. A simple job posting online could generate hundreds of resumes in a day. A well-designed applicant tracking system provides the ability to receive applications, initiate background checks, coordinate interview schedules, and maintain all candidate documents in one place. A strategic approach to selection requires ways to measure the effectiveness of selection tools. From science, we have basic standards that the method provides reliable and valid information. The reliability of a type of measurement indicates how free that measurement is from random error. A reliable measurement therefore generates consistent results. For a selection measure, validity describes the extent to which performance on the measure, such as a test score, is related to what the measure is designed to assess, such as job performance. One way to determine whether a measure is valid is to compare many people's scores on that measure with their job performance. Another consideration is the cost of using the selection method. Selection procedures such as testing and interviewing cost money. They should cost significantly less than the benefits of hiring new employees. Nearly all employers gather background information on applicants at the beginning of the selection process. The usual ways of gathering information are by asking applicants to fill out application forms and providing resumes. Organizations also verify the information by checking references and conducting background checks. Asking job candidates to provide background information is inexpensive. However, human resource departments are often swamped with far more resumes than they can carefully review. Some employers are alleviating this problem by using software to analyze the contents and identify applicants who meet basic criteria for the position. Asking each applicant to fill out an employment application is a low cost way to gather basic data from many applicants. It also ensures that the organization has certain standard categories of information. These include contact information, work experience, educational background, other skills and professional certifications, and an applicant's signature. The application form should not request information that could violate equal employment standards. In fact, some organizations hire services that will remove details that many unconsciously may be used to consider candidates' gender, race, and so on. The usual way that applicants introduce themselves to a potential employer is to submit a resume. An obvious drawback of this information source is that applicants control the content of the information as well as the way in which it's presented. However, resumes are an inexpensive way to gather information and provide employers with a starting point. They also may provide some insight into how candidates communicate and present themselves. Employers tend to decide against applicants whose resumes are unclear, sloppy, or full of mistakes. On the positive side, resumes enable applicants to highlight accomplishments that might not show up in the format of an employment application. A background check is a way to verify that applicants are who they represent themselves to be. Unfortunately, not all candidates are open and honest. HR departments need to set standards for what to do if information is different from sources and inconsistent. The organization continues to narrow the pool of candidates, often through one or more employment tests. 
Achievement test measures a person's existing knowledge and skills. Before using any test, organizations should investigate the test validity and reliability. Besides asking the testing service to provide information, it's wise to consult more impartial sources of information. When physical abilities are essential to the job performance or avoidance of injury, the organization may use physical ability tests. Because they can make the organization vulnerable to charges of discrimination, it's important that abilities tests are really for essential performance functions or that the absence of these abilities really does not create a safety hazard. Cognitive abilities tests, sometimes called intelligence tests, are designed to measure mental abilities as a ver such as verbal skills, qualitative skills, and reasoning ability. The evidence of validity, coupled with the relatively low cost of these tests, makes them appealing, except for legal concerns arising from a historical pattern in which the use of tests has had an adverse impact. To evaluate candidates for jobs requiring specialized tasks, the organization may administer tests that involve a sample of work. Testing may involve a difficult team project, keyboarding speed, and in-basket exercises. Especially for physically demanding jobs, organizations may wish to conduct medical examinations to see that the applicant can meet the job requirements. To protect candidates' privacy, medical exams must be related to job requirements and may not be given until the candidate has received a job offer. Therefore, organizations must be careful in how they use these medical evaluations. Supervisors and team members most often get involved in the selection process at the stage of the interview. While the applicant is providing information, he or she is also forming opinions about what it's like to work for the organization. Most organizations use interviewing as part of the selection process. In fact, this method is used more than any other. Interview techniques include choices about the types of questions to ask and the number of people to conduct the interview. In a non-directive interview, the interviewer has great discretion in choosing questions. A structured interview establishes a set of questions for the interviewer to ask. Ideally, the questions are related to job requirements and cover relevant knowledge, skills, and experiences. A situational interview is structured and the interviewer describes a situation likely to arise in the job and asks the candidate what he or she would do in that situation. A behavioral interview is structured and the interviewer asks the candidate to describe how he or she would handle a situation in the past. Questions about candidates' actual experiences tend to have the highest validity. In a panel interview, several members of the organization meet to interview each candidate. It provides the organization with the judgments of more than one person to reduce the effect of personal bias in selection decisions. The wide use of interviewing is not surprising. Interviews can give insights into candidates' personalities and interpersonal skills. They're more valid, however, when they focus on job knowledge and skill. Despite these benefits, interviewing is not necessarily the most accurate basis for making a selection decision. Research has shown that interviews can be unreliable, low in validity, and biased against a number of different groups. Organizations can reap the greatest benefits from interviewing if they prepare carefully. A well-planned interview should be standardized comfortable for participants and focused on the job and the organization. Any interviewers should be trained in how to ask objective questions, what subject matter to avoid, and how to detect and handle his or her own personal bias and other distractions in order to fairly evaluate candidates. The interviewer should schedule enough time to review the job requirements, discuss the interview questions, and give the interviewee a chance to ask them. To close, the interviewer should thank the candidate for coming and provide information about what to expect. Now the organization needs to make decisions about which candidates to place in which jobs. The selection decision typically combines ranking based on objective criteria along with subjective judgments about which candidate will make the greatest contribution. Often, the selection is a choice among a few people who possess the basic qualifications needed. The decision makers must decide which of those people have the best combination of ability and motivation to fit the position and the organization. The usual process for arriving at a selection decision is to gradually narrow the pool of candidates for each job. Each stage of the process is a hurdle, and candidates who overcome a hurdle continue to the next stage. 
Some organizations might place less emphasis on the skills needed for a particular job and more emphasis on hiring candidates who share the organization's values and are who are able to learn the skills necessary for advancement. The Human Resource Department is often responsible for notifying applicants about the results of the selection process. When a candidate has been selected, the organization should communicate the offer to the candidate. The offer should include the job responsibilities, work schedule, rate of pay, starting date, and other relevant details. 